Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's movie blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today we'll be talking about why PC culture is destroying classic movies. And case in point here is Disney Plus from a new report saying Disney Plus will indeed censor a number of their Disney Plus movies in their upcoming launch of Disney Plus's network, which is coming up very, very soon. And I am still not that excited for it because I don't plan to get it. I still plan to watch some of the shows for it, allegedly, of course, but I honestly don't understand why I would even want to pay a dollar towards Disney if all they're going to do is take the franchises that we love, change elements to them, and they, they, then make them into political statements and then try and shove them down our throats. I don't understand why I would ever want to support that type of nonsense, which is why I'm choosing not to. So this is coming from our boys over at Bounding the Comics, Mr. John F. Trent, who talks about this report coming out. So a new report is detailing that Disney will be censoring a number of its classic movies for its upcoming streaming service, Disney+. Plus. CNBC reports that the streaming service will not offer its Academy Award-winning 1946 animated feature, The Song of the South. That really isn't a surprise, as Disney has never released the film in any home video format in the United States before, which... To me, it's just, it's kind of sad when you think about it. And I know that some people might try and spin that as trying to say, are you trying to support this? Are you trying to support racism, etc.? And the answer is no. But at the same time, too, I think that we should not hide from our history. I think that it's important that we see movies like that, that we see things like that, because it helps us to remind us that there was a time in history where we were different. There wasn't time in history where we used to do things differently. It's like people in today's world trying to censor books like Huck Finn or trying to censor uh, uh, books like, Oh my goodness, I'm trying to think about it. Um, oh my goodness, they, they just had a sequel to it. But basically, where in the books themselves they use certain language, like the N word or other other uh, or other types of slang like that, because they're like, oh, it's gonna offend people. When in reality, no, the reason why those books are even read still today is because it is used as a tool to remind people this is what times were like. This is how people acted. Look at how things were now, look or then, look at how things are now, see how much has changed, how much has improved, and maybe what things we might still need to work on. But you don't have that same impact. You can't have that same impact if you're just going to censor yourself and if you're just going to censor your history in the way that they are doing. I think people should see Song of the South. It was an Oscar. It was an Academy Award winning animated feature. And yes, we could talk about how there's a, there are problems with that movie, but I think that people should be able to watch it to say, hey, this is historically important because it helps to reveal to us what things were actually like. It helps to reveal to us certain truths about our world and about our society and about our culture. Those things are important to know. It's amazing that they won't go ahead to show those films and those scenes to make a political point, but they'll make new movies that are pushing political agendas down our throats, and they have no problem with that. It's amazing that they're fine at censoring the stuff that actually will be more impactful, that actually would mean a lot more to a lot more people because of the messages that you'd be able to get from that, but rather focus on the stupid identity politics of today and in the end, ruin their franchises and ruin their films in the process. And so it's not just Song of the South that is looking to be censored. Iger adds, it wouldn't be in the best interest of our shareholders to bring it back, even though there would be some financial gain. Seriously, if you were to bring it back, I probably would buy it, to be perfectly honest, because it is historical. It is an historical project, and I think it's important for us to not just simply ignore history. Those that ignore history are doomed to repeat it. If you try and whitewash everything from your past, if you try and say, oh, we're, we're great now, we're fine now, we're better now, because now we're woke, now we're PC, now we're going to go ahead and push political narratives that are, that are good political narratives in 2019, we're just down the road in 20, 30 years, maybe they'll find out, oh, that actually was not the right way, so now we're going to censor ourselves again. No, how about just let people see everything that's there and make up their own minds? Why not let people see things? And if you want, you can have a message beforehand saying, this came out during the 1940s and this was the era. This was what was going on at the time. Or this is when the actual movie was set. You know, you can do that. You can educate. You can use these as educational moments for people. But you'd rather be obsessed with turning Star Wars into something that it's not, turning the Avengers and MCU into something that it's not. You would rather focus on that, ruining franchises, than actually educating people. Oh, how the times have changed. CNBC also reports that Disney will remove its Jim Crow character from Dumbo. The Jim Crow character from the original Dumbo will be edited out of the film version that appears on the streaming service. Great, so now you're editing classic movies. And we can talk about, again, 
why it's historically relevant to talk about that character and why that character maybe is not the smartest idea and the smartest thing they could have put into a movie. We could also look at that character and realize, wait a minute, but there's also a teaching moment to be had there. It's just like what was going on in my hometown of New Orleans where they were trying to take down Confederate statues. Because at the end of the day, all they're doing is trying to say, oh, forget the past. Forget the fact that New Orleans was a major Confederate stronghold. Forget all of those things. When in reality, it's like, no, keep them up. Because then if I take my child or if I take my school or if I take anyone to those locations, I can say, yeah, you see this person right here? This is who they were. This is what we used to be. Use it as a teaching moment. I don't know why we just can't have this at this point in time. So they're launching this on November 12th in a couple of days. And dear Lord, man, it's just, it's so ridiculous that they're doing that. So of course, luckily, all of these things have been preserved in the, you know, in the frequent and, and previous releases. But I think that it's going to become a hot commodity nowadays because they're trying to censor their films so much and change all of their content. And they, of course, have that stupid vault system where they artificially create demand for various films that sometimes it's going to be pretty hard to find original content in its original form without paying an arm and a leg because the cop because the the actual copies of the film are so limited you would think that maybe on the on the you know there's digital service where you're supposed to be buying the entire library and you would think you'd be getting a complete movie apparently not here Apparently not here. That was an actual part of the movie itself. One that I could see, you know what, fine, whatever is going to be to the Toy Story 2 one featuring Stinky Pete. This is something that got everyone into huge uproar in the hashtag Me Too movement. And that was where he was trying and appearing to seduce two Barbie dolls and promises he can get them roles in Toy Story 3. People thought it was a little bit too on the nose with Harvey Weinstein and everything like that. That was in the post credits, right? That is something that you can take out of the post credits and it does not change the movie. It does not change the character at all. Not so much with the previous ones, right? In the previous ones, you're erasing an entire film, you're erasing an entire film from existence in Song of the South, and you are taking a piece of a movie that is still relevant to the story because it does have some narratives that it's trying to portray in those stories in the Dumbo scene with Jim Crow. So Toy Story 3, again, even then, I'm still like, yeah, you know what, though? Why not just have it be as it actually is? Because then you could have that, again, as a teaching moment. How many times am I going to say that today? Keep a count in the chat because I know that I'm going to be saying that word a lot. But you can have it say, yeah, you see this right here? This is something that does happen in Hollywood. You see this character right here? This is something that does happen in, in the media. This is something that does happen in, pop, in, in the overall culture at large. And it needs to be addressed. You don't get to have that conversation if you don't have something to point them to, if you don't have something to show to them. And what better way to show that to kids and say, hey, here are these characters right here. Here's what's going on. Now I can explain to you what, what, why this is significant, why this is important. But if you had nothing for them to look at, hey... You got nothing to talk about. And then, of course, you've got newer releases. For some reason, they decided to remake, uh, you know, Lady and the Tramp. No one asked them to. No one wanted it to. It's going to be a quote-unquote live action with some of the most CGI-looking animals that I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't understand why they continue to do this nonsense, but it's possible more censorship will come in from Disney's older movies. In the upcoming Lady and the Tramp live action remake, the classic The Siamese Cat Song will be removed from the film with a new song replacing it. Yes, because now we can no longer have any moments in film history be repeated. You know what the easiest way to avoid that entire thing was? Don't remake Lady and the Tramp. And I think that's a good point here from, uh, you know, John F. Trent always has great commentary. I think that's a very good point that you might eventually see them either completely edit out the Siamese Cat song from the original animated version of Lady and the Tramp because it has not been revealed that that is going to be a movie that gets censored. But hey, it's a very good chance seeing that they're censoring now with this film. But you could also even see them try to put in the new song in place of it. Say, oh, no one's going to know the difference. We can still make this work. Which totally craps on the work of those original artists. Think about, too, this is, the, the, to me, the, the, the thing that pisses me off the most is that you have a company that is supposed to be caring about creative integrity. It's supposed to be caring about the creative minds in the process. But now you have taken away. You have now erased the gentleman that plays the lead role in Song of the South. How are we supposed to know about anything about him now? You're, you're taking away the Academy Award winning film that he was featured in. Now we don't get, even get to know he existed. Now we have no idea who he is. You have, uh, you have all of these different scenes and all these different songs and all these different parts getting cut out. Think about the artist. Think about the people involved in the process who now their work is just gone. The only things or some of the most well-known things that they have to remember them by are now <laughs> gone for all time. Even most film historians and even most film scholars will tell you that films like 
the one made by the KKA back in the day, which also won a lot of awards, got a lot of recognition, is actually considered to be, even to this day, one of the greatest films of all time as far as the content, as far as how it's crafted, how it's made, and how it's shot. Even that film, people say, it's a terrible movie because it's promoting hatred. It's promoting racism, and yet, it's important to the lexicon of film because of all the things it added to it, meaning it still deserves to exist because it represents a time in history. It represents what things were like at a specific time, and if we can't remember what things were like, if we can't remember what things were like just even just a few years ago, how can we be expected to learn from it? How can we be expected to know and learn anything from any of it? I think that this is a terrible decision by Disney to censor their content because it's taking away moments that parents could be using to teach their kids, and it's also continuing to buy into and sell the souls to the PC culture we live in today, and it's just really sad. Let me know your thoughts about this. Do you think that Disney is justified in doing this? Obviously, they have the right to do it, but I really do think that it's spitting in the face of the creators that they are limiting or censoring in certain ways and even erasing from existence in others. And I think that that's a sad thing to see. Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below and anything we talked about in the comment section. If you like this video, smash that like button, give me a subscribe. It helps me out a lot. You are all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.